Tuning in and welcome to Bitches, Bitches in, in the, the Buckle. Buckle. I'm joined here tonight by Stephen Dillard Carroll. And I'm joined by Joe Langley. And we are here to present to you a hell of a show today. Last week we discussed that we might be talking about sex, but oh baby, we decided not to. We put our junk away, at least for today. <laughs> we tucked it back in and made sure, that just in case anybody's out there, don't be a fool, wrap your tool. Stop. Honey, my tuck is tight. It is so tight. How tight is it? I don't have a punchline. That's I'm what a... she said. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, let's go ahead and turn on, make sure you have your bibs, bibs on, put down the barbecue. I've got my bibs on. You got I, your bibs on? I, I definitely do. We had some cheeseburgers tonight, thanks to courtesy of Christopher Langley and, my, and our wallets, and McDonald's. Thanks, McDonald's. For being so awfully good. Tonight's sponsor of the Bitches in the Buckle is not McDonald's. <laughs> it's not McDonald's. Tonight's sponsor is the wallet of Christopher and Joe and us. Yes. Again, as always. Yeah. Um, okay, so how was your week? My week was fine, except for the fact that I flunked a test. Oh my god. My first test ever I've ever flunked. But at the same time, the teacher had mercy on the rest of us, forced him to also flunk the test. Because we had a ukulele player in the background who could not play, he could not sing, and it was in the other classroom. And it was very distracting to a bunch of college students. I'll tell you, when you have someone who can't sing, first off, and it's just one of those things, it's just you got to be able to focus on the exam. And, uh, so are you saying that it wasn't just you that flunked? No, I was actually the moderate. I was literally, if I was uh, a little bit grieving on a curve, I would have gotten a C. Oh, and, uh, so. And the average was 54% on the exam. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just see. The, the teacher was uh, not exactly happy about everything, but he was uh, nice enough to uh, give us a whole brand new exam because he admitted that it was way too, he admitted that he had said it way too long. So then... On the failing curve, you would have gotten a C. Yes, I would have gotten a C. So at least on the I, failing curve. On the failing curve. <laughs> but everybody <laughs> failed. So there's a good sign on that one. Um, but other than that, not much. How was your week? Well, I'm sorry. I have to adjust my butt. Okay. Uh, what cushion? So the cushion is going to be fine. Yes. Okay. Um... Why are parents assholes? Can I just put that out there? Which parents? The ones outside? No, my parents. Oh. Um, uh, because everybody has them and they all stink every right now and then. I guess. Okay. But not every not every parent stinks. I will say this. My in-laws are so awesome. They let us play Cards Against Humanity with them last weekend. Awesome. Which is pretty epic. So I, I got to give them a... You know, I'm sure everybody has qualms with their parents, but my in-laws are kick-ass people. Right on. Right on. Well, and when you asked me about my week, my week was okay. It's just that um, my parents love to, I guess, and, and, and I'm not 16 years old, and I'm not emo, and I'm not writing in my journal that my life sucks while painting on black mascara and wearing black clothes. That's not it at all. It's just, it's just that today, it, my parents decided to, as I was walking out the door to come to Bitches in the Buckle, my, both my parents double-teamed me 
and said some really, really off-color shit to me. It had nothing to do with bitches in the buckle, by the way. Um, they probably don't even know that this show exists. Um, but it just, it was, it was completely unnecessary and completely uncalled for. And hurtful, so I like it. And hurtful, and, and and not even true, you know. It's one thing to be hurt by the truth because sometimes the truth, in fact, does hurt. But to say something that isn't even true, not even by a long shot, not true. Thank um, you, Christopher. Thank you, Christopher. Christopher for pouring our drinks. Served us up some drinks. Um, the non-alcoholic type. Yet. Um, okay, so here's what my mom said, and, and, and this is bitches in the buckle, so I get to bitch for a minute. Um, my mom said, okay, um, okay, first of all, um, I'm having trouble, um, sleeping lately. I haven't been getting a lot of sleep. In fact, last night, um, this morning, I didn't get to bed until 6 a.m., and I didn't, and, and I slept until around noon, and I had told my parents that I was coming over today, um, but I was busy from, like, noon until I got there, which was around 4.45. Well, I left about an hour later, and my mom got a stick up her butt because um, she felt as if I was putting my friends over family. And that gets to me. Because not only is it not true, there have there are so many examples that I will not get into because we only have an hour show wherein I dropped my entire life for my mom and dad. Um, there have been times where I have dropped my entire life for them. And I'm not talking about a day or two. I'm talking about my entire life for months on end um, to cater to their needs, um, to their very legitimate needs, I, I might add, um, but to their needs. Um, and for her to say something like that, right as I'm leaving, you know, it would be nice if you, um, if, if, if we mattered as much as your friends mattered. It's like, you know what? <sighs> First of all, that's not true. And second of all, it kills me that you would say something like that because your butt hurt because I could only spend an hour with you um, today. And not only that, but when I told you that um, I woke up, I didn't get to sleep until 6 o'clock, um, and I slept until noon, and, um, you didn't, and, you did, and, and I've been having trouble sleeping lately, your first instinct isn't to ask me, well, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, instead you get all butthurt because I have to leave. And my mom is not here for, to, um, to defend herself. I get that. But at the same time, and, and then my dad um, said something to me um, maybe about five minutes before I left. Um, he, um, I had asked them for um, money for gas, right? Um, something that I am loath to do. I do not ask my parents for any kind of money unless it is absolutely necessary. And um, and he said, oh, so he he basically said, oh, so um, we gave you gas money, and now we don't hear from you for an entire week. And I'm like, what's that supposed to mean? You know, it's like, what, what? What are you trying to say? You know, are you trying to say that I'm just here to use you, to use you, and to not do anything in return or not give you anything in return? Because that, quite frankly, is bullshit. Again, because there have been times on numerous occasions that I have put my entire life on hold for these people. And that's not to say that they wouldn't do the same in return. It's just that sometimes it would be nice not to be reminded of how much you owe somebody. You know, mm -hmm. I don't bring up 
shit that other people owe me. So it would be nice to get that in return. And so um, my so to answer your question, the short of it all is that it's been an up and down week. I've been missing a lot of sleep the last few days, and my parents right before I came over here were assholes. But as soon as I walked into the world headquarters of bitches in the buckle, <laughs> um, I felt instantly better, and um, I am so glad to be here tonight. We're glad to have you, and uh, that's one of the things we like to keep. Oh, no, I haven't vacuumed, and I'm sorry for that. I was intending on it, but got home and got stuck in fighting Mother, you know, Mother Nature cold. But uh, that being said, I'm glad you felt better when you came in, and I, I know how it is to have parents who don't always... Uh, you can't always see eye to eye, but sometimes you have to put your foot down. And my dad and I, even though we are not exactly of the same faith, we still talk, and he still loves me. And we still mention it on the phone. So I, I as far as advice to provide to that, I have no clue. Well, and to be fair, um, when I called my dad on it, and when I said, well, what is that supposed to mean? What do you mean by that? He immediately backed off. So to his credit, he realized that, you know, he better not pursue that line of thought and that line of conversation any further or else it would have become a drag out fight, knock down drag out fight. And as far as my mom, I just laughed her off um, as I was walking out the door, like, whatever, mom, and just walked off. And um, so her and I... We'll have words, I am sure, at some other point. But Mothers you know kind of stew for a bit. That's just how they are. And then they bring it back to you and bring it back to you. And and people wonder why I don't have kids. I think you'd be a good dad. Oh, uh, here we go. Uh, but you know, hey, that's, you know. Everyone wonder. says, oh, Stephen, you'll be such a great father. You should pop out a few kids. Well, first of all, I'm not popping anything out. Be, <laughs> if that actually happens, I'm putting that on YouTube. And, <laughs> yeah. And That'd be like a, what's that one where you had a, the actor who was pretending to be pregnant in the movie? Uh, Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. Yeah. 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 I don't remember the name of that movie, but yeah. Um, but I, I, I just feel as if, you, you know, too much fuckery and foolery has happened in my family and the buck stops with me. Yeah. And if if my parents really want grandkids, um Adopt. I have two I no no no. I have two brothers and two sisters. You... Um and plenty of nieces and nephews. Um so they have plenty of grandkids. Um they don't need grandkids from me. So, so. I got this interesting thing in the mail. Okay. okay. I see it. All right, what's it's going on? It's kind of comical. Supposedly, um, someone's trying to save my soul again. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so something uh, from the Final Days Prophecy, some some um, Christianity thing. Uh, looks like we got the Bible Prophecy Seminars uh -huh. sending me junk mail in the mail. And I don't know why, but, you know, um, this Manny Laporte must have been a very important guy to... Send send it to bitches in the buckle here. So we're gonna, you know, advertise a little bit for him. Um, stop sending me junk mail. And intelligent the final days, an intelligent look into Bible prophecy. And Manny Laporte is the speaker. He's a seasoned evangelist with a love for people. That's good. And a passion for the Word of God. Okay, especially the Book of Revelation. Interesting. Um. And so the Bible will be our guidebook. This prophecy seminar is presented in a relaxed atmosphere as a community service to all people. That's very good. We invite you to come as you are. That's also good. And enjoy this fascinating prophecy seminar. See you there. Registration is free. So this is going on Friday. The uh, 24th. That's already passed, everybody. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Hey, this is already passed. This so. is comical. I'm getting it now. Um, um, 24th, 25th, and 26th. So Friday. Oh, I love this. Countdown to Armageddon happened on Friday. So here's my question. You know, <laughs> and and from a theological perspective, and I did, I did, I don't know if you know this. I was actually uh, my first year of college was Bible college. 
Is that so right? So I studied the Bible pretty damn intensely, when, especially being a pastor's child. Right. I had it rimmed on my throat for 21 years prior. Sure. Um, well, not 21 years prior, but, you know, 18 years prior. And the Bible says, not even the Son of Man, quote Jesus, knows when the end day will be. Only God. So anybody, my question is, for those who might be Christian out there, how can you tell when the end day is going to come if only God knows? Well... People have been predicting the end of time since the beginning of time. This is true. So, um, th- you know, nothing new is under the sun. There is nothing um, new under the sun. But that's, and, and, and so, uh, it, and we'll get into that a little bit here. But um, Saturday's one was actually interesting. Um, hope in the apocalypse. Now, if it had said hope in the zombie apocalypse, I would have been, been there. Front row center. <laughs> <laughs> because there has to be some hope in the zombie apocalypse. Um, Especially with the people getting up and walking from ex- the. Exactly, oh, and 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 that's the other thing. And Revelation said the dead will be raised. The dead will be raised. The dead will be raised indestructible. Handle Messiah. <laughs> and the dead shall be raised. Um, it's Messiah. Anyway, um, so it's interesting that um, there is hope in the apocalypse. So that's very, very good because I, when the zombie apocalypse happens, Brains. and it will happen, I will be in my underground bunker, so... I know how to open tuna cans now with a cinder block. <laughs> with my teeth. <laughs> um, and then Sunday, October 26th, was Revelations, Thief in the Night. No one wants to be left behind, discovered what the Bible says about Re- Revelations, Thief in the Night. So I wonder... I'm not seeing any kind of, um, let me see. I, I, I'm looking for, oh, shut the front door, ladies and gentlemen. This is from the Central Adventist Church. <laughs> and guess who grew, guess which one of us grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist? You did, but I also dated one. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, Who had the audacity to tell me my parents were not Christian? Central Adventist <laughs> Church. I grew up as an Adventist. So this might have been interesting just as a trip down memory lane I, <laughs> for, for me to have gone to. And I know exactly where this church is. It, it, was, um, it wasn't even a mile from where I used to live. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and it's absolutely free. Adventists are all about getting you in there for free. Countdown to Armageddon, hope or horror. I love that. Um, anyway. Um, I'm sitting here playing with fire. Oh, we're doing oh but the fire. last thing, the last thing on this. Um, um, I love this. It says, date sensitive material. Requested in home date October 20th through the 22nd. And when did you receive this? Just recently. Like uh, between the 20th and so the 22nd? Yeah. Did you receive it? On- Probably. Oh, okay. Because I thought you like could receive it today because I thought that that would, would have been funny. You know, we, we missed the bus. You know. Well, we didn't get on it. They didn't <laughs> want us at all. But anyway, that's interesting. Um, I, I will say this. I will say this. Um, and before we move on from this particular subject, oh, um, shortbread cookies. Sorry. As far as um, 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 oh, what do I want to say? As far as prophecy goes, and interpretation of prophecy, and Daniel and the Revelation goes, I will say that Adventists have done their homework. They will, uh, yeah. Um, I will say that. And, you know, it, it, if if Christianity is your way, and um, that's fine. And if you were looking for a church that um, has done their homework on prophecy, um, specifically the prophecies in Daniel and Revelation, you can't go wrong with the Adventist church um, because they seriously have done their homework. So that's the one nice thing that I can say about the Adventist church, um, the church that I grew up um, in my first 22 years on this planet. So there you go. 
It's not good to me. Moving on. I um, just kind of wanted to flip up a card for the day, since today's current would be the strength card, speaking of, uh, ironically. Um, looks like someone uh, right now who might be tuning in could use a little more strength in their life. Uh, someone who also might be tuning in might be having some issues. I, I did get the tower in reverse, mm -hmm. which means their life is flipping upside down. So uh, Right, uh, but it's something that they see coming. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting from this spread, we've got, what is that? The, the Queen, Queen of, of Wands. Wands um, in the reverse spiritual. position. Spiritual. Spirit, need for spiritual guidance. Right. Um, we've got the Queen of Wands. We've got the Strength card. And, and the one thing that's jumping out at me is that we've got the Strength card, which is the one card out of the three card spread that is in the upright position. Mm -hmm. And you've got two cards that are book-ending the strength um, in the reverse position, which means that for me, there's a lot of chaos that is um, is about to happen, mm -hmm. or um, there's a lot of chaos that is happening in someone's life right now, and, and they don't believe in themselves enough. They don't believe that they have the exactly. inner strength to um, to get through whatever they're um, working through right now. So or reserve um, that strength that they have because they're going to need it. Right, and mm -hmm. and. Uh, the, the way that I read cards is you, especially with the strength card, is you absolutely have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, regardless of the, of, the universe might be saying, to, excuse me, the universe Let's might see. be saying to you, you're strong, you're strong, you're strong. But if you don't believe, don't believe it, it, then how are you going to fulfill it? Exactly. And the other thing that I really just started noticing on these cards is that in the corner, and I've been doing some Celtic research since I was watching that um, uh, the Viking series for whoever might be turning trying them. The first series is free on Amazon Prime, and the second series just came out on DVD, folks. It's amazing. <coughs> But right here they have the eagle, and um, <coughs> rises up on wings of eagles. Just comes to mind. Is that? <coughs> excuse me. Okay, I'm gonna drink. Okay, um, that makes sense. Again, and the strength. Um, with, with, with the strength card, it might be asking you to um take some perspective. You know, mm -hmm. uh. Your virus database has been, it's been updated. updated. That's um, amazing. Um, I love it, Vast. But it's it, it's telling me that you need to perhaps even take some perspective and look at it from a detached point of view, and mm -hmm. in in order to not only see the things that are coming, but see the things that are past, and see how they work towards. The, your greater life. Yeah, um, and like a like an eagle, look over it. One of the few things I've been working with as an amateur photographer now, which I just tried out my little thing, I'm excited, yay, uh, is to take a different perspective. Get every angle that you can on the photography because sometimes you might not have the best lighting from one angle. Right. But if you take the same, the person holding the same pose, they're holding that same pose, but you get it at every angle as you possibly can using the same, the same lens, the same refraction, you might have something that works. Go up on a ladder. Because what you happens, the eagle soars over everything. It gets an, a bird's eye view. Right. And just kind of leaning with you, what you're saying is someone, sometimes, sometimes it's best to get the bird's eye view of what's going on in your life. Right. And sometimes we're so in the middle of everything, you know, that we can't see. You, you know, sometimes life can be so overwhelming. We're, we're like in the middle of a storm. Exactly. You know, and everything is coming at us from all different sides. Um, and we even see in the future where more problems are going to come. And so sometimes we can feel overwhelmed. Um, and But taking that eagle eye view, you know, taking that other perspective and looking and seeing how um, these events that are happening in our lives um, are working towards our greater good, mm -hmm. um, then perhaps that's a better way of looking at life rather than constantly being overwhelmed by the issues that are happening right now. It could also be seeking guidance because sometimes a person, a close friend, might have a different take on what's going on. Right. 
you know, and they they might be partial. They, you know, if they can take an impartial view, they can tell you as it is. Right, and so um, before we move on from that, I, would I just figured that was a good thing to bring in. We haven't no, no, done no, that yet. I, I'm sorry to throw that one in there, but no, 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 no. It, it, it's very smart. You know, it, we both um, do readings, so there you go. Um, yeah, definitely. But you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your ability to overcome anything that comes your way mm -hmm. and also to ask for outside perspective, get an outside view, um, try and see it from a different angle, um, see how things are working towards um, the good in your life, um, and even maybe even change your point of view. Mm -hmm. Because if you change your point of view, then suddenly these things that may seem overwhelming to you might not seem as overwhelming anymore. This is true. Yeah. All right, so let's move on. Moving on. Let's move on to the news. You know what? We need one of those, like, um, we need a sound effect, like, um, and, and we'll have to get this for later on, but I was just thinking we need, like, need a, um, like a, like a newsroom kind of a sound effect, like like typewriters see? going oh, off. Oh, I have just a sound. Let's just, um, you know, before we get to the news. Um, or we could go like, and, and all the typing going on and the hustle and bustle of a newsroom. Um, bitches in the buckle news. Okay, that wasn't it. Okay. No, well, maybe not so much. That. How about this one? This is also from CBN. <laughs> and now the news from bitches in the buckle. buckle. Now on B I B N. <laughs> um. Okay, this favorites. is coming out of our very... Oh, no, 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 no. This is coming out of um, the New York Daily News. Um, but it's actually a local story to Oklahoma. Um, but sure, Oklahoma. Um, Oklahoma woman says she's a witch and she needs her, her math. math. Um, witchcraft made her do it. An Oklahoma woman tried to get out of a drug bus by saying meth was perfectly okay for her to use because it was part of her Wiccan religion. Um, where in, our, when in, where in the Wiccan religion does it mention anything about methamphetamine? Well, exactly. And, <clears throat> and, and we'll get to that in a minute, but, I mean, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I have some statements on that. Keep going. Exactly. Um, yeah, right, said cops who arrested the self-proclaimed witch and charged her with possession of narcotics and possession of drug paraphernalia. Which tells me one of two things. Either we have some cops out there now who are pagan, thank you as cops you are, and thank I might you. be saying, or those who have met me from school, you guys are left to. Oh yeah, I need some cops, sorry. So Lori Portar and Richard Lee Henderson were stopped while driving on US Highway 91 because their vehicle had a broken taillight. The Duncan Banner reported. <laughs> Both had Crown Royale liquor bags. Hey! Hey, Crown! <laughs> containing syringes, a oh, spoon, nice. and traces of methamphetamine, the paper said. Henderson um, did not claim he was a witch, police said. So a couple of things here. First of all, um, it's so good that um, the New York Daily mm. News got it right um, that the male in the car did not say he was a witch rather than saying he did not say he was a warlock. So they at least got at that At least right. they got that right, yes. Right. I will be appreciative. Thank you, New so, York News. Yes, thank you, New York Daily News. Now, a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, if, if it's not... <laughs> one of the precepts of paganism is if oh harm there none 
Uh, do, do what, what thou will. Do what thou will. I'm such a bad witch. Uh. It's okay. <laughs> However, making methamphetamine is very highly uh, fucking dangerous. Exactly. Um, can harm little children. Can harm uh, and so, uh, trust me, dying from a drug over it can kill you. Right. I mean, like there's things like pot, and I did that in my youth. Um, sorry. Pot. Uh, um, don't apologize for pot. Pot is wonderful. Pot. Yeah, pot is good. <laughs> And it's got a lot of medicinal purposes. Right. However, it can't kill you. Alcohol right. in moderation. In moderation. Moderation. Is good for your heart. Wine. Right. Red wine is good for your heart. Even doctors approve this. Methamphetamine can kill you, thus affecting other people. And it harm none, do what you will. Which means if you're harming yourself or harming somebody else, you're not following the Wiccan read. So, and, and let me make the distinction here as well. There is a very big, big difference between harming and hurting someone. Mm -hmm. um, if I say to you, Joe... Fuchsia is a really ugly color on you. That may hurt you because fuchsia may be your favorite color, <coughs> but I'm not harming you. No, you're only hoping. I'm saving you from a lifetime of embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. And I mean, yes, it's exactly like that. Let me see what the magic eight balls is to that. Uh, yeah, I should never wear fuchsia. Magic eight ball says no. Ah, uh, with that being said, moving on. Um, no, but it's the whole thing of asking, uh, demanding help, but you're not helping anybody else by smoking, and you're harming. Meth. Right, yes, and you're meth. and you're and you're harming. Yeah, you're absolutely. harming. To, there's you're harming the environment. Right. You're putting if you're cooking it at your place, you're putting your neighbors at risk in case it blows up. Right. Um, Which is why if you're going to cook meth, you should cook it in a mobile home that's out in the wilderness. <laughs> You'll still harm nature. Right. And make sure that you have a moat around it. <laughs> With lots of crocodiles to eat you when they're done. Right. So if you're going to cook meth, make sure you're in the middle of a wilderness um, in a mobile home, and you have a big ass moat around you. And around the moat, you can have high, uh, a maize garden with high protein and rich vegetables. Yes, <laughs> because protein and rich vegetables taste terrible. <laughs> and you, if you're cooking meth, you deserve terrible tasting food. Right. Um, so all of this is just to say. First of all, this person was not a witch. Clearly. Yep. Although she may have been high and she may have thought she was a witch. That's fine. I'm much. flying! I'm <laughs> flying! Like a wicked witch. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, yeah. um, but also, um, again, and in harm none, do what thou wilt. Um, it's very, and, and that's at the end of the Wicked Read. If you don't know what the Wicked Read is, look it up. Um, and just know that we're not about harming ourselves, we're not about harming um, each other, and we're not about harming the environment. So again, if you're going to be a meth user, make sure, or a meth maker, or a meth user, make sure that you do it in a mobile home in the middle of a wilderness with a 20-foot wide moat filled with water surrounding you um, that can only and the only way to get to you is by a draw drawbridge. That way, when your mobile home explodes and it will explode, the only person that you're harming is, is yourself. yourself. It's still harming someone, but you know you have nobody to blame but yourself. Right. And that's the way it goes. And then you'll come back as a tick or a piece of head lice. Right. So, I guess, uh, and, and that was the only piece of news that I had today. Did you have a piece of news? No, today? but I did shoot out a question on the Pagan Way Facebook. Okay. And uh, especially considering the, our topic tonight, and I, I, I'm going to, uh, with their permission I did have, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of ask what their um, 
what their fondest memories of uh, Solon are. Side note, this Sprite is delicious. <laughs> I'm going to have another cup, thank you. Please do. Let's see, pig and way. As long as they haven't kicked me yet, as I got from kicked from the other group, which was really funny. Watch who you mouth off to on the Facebook page, because it just might as well be your last mouth. Ooh. Uh, going down. Sorry. All right, so we're experiencing dead air here, so... Working on it. While she's looking for that... My question. There we are. Aha. The first, with Sinead, Bourgeoisie. What was your uh, favorite memory for someone when you were a kid? <laughs> Or recently. What's your favorite Samhain memory? Okay, this is not my favorite Samhain memory. It's my favorite Halloween memory. Looking back on it, this is my favorite Halloween memory. Um, if, if any of you know about Adventism out there, we, you know that Adventists don't believe in Halloween. And so my mom, what she would do is... She would buy a ton of candy, like a ton of candy. And on Halloween night, she turned off all the lights. She turned off all the electronic devices so no one would come knocking on the door saying trick or treat. And she would feed us Halloween candy. That's awesome. In the dark. <laughs> <laughs> on a dark and scary night. <laughs> By candlelight. By like candlelight, they ate candy. Want a snickle little boy? Okay! So that's my favorite Halloween story. It's an Asylum story, but um, it's certainly my favorite Halloween story because it was so kooky. It was so weird. I, you know, looking back at it now, I can laugh, but going through it, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why so do we they... have to eat in the dark? Did they celebrate Christmas at all? We do celebrate Christmas, yes. And Thanksgiving and Easter and it's just uh, just not Halloween. Just not Halloween. Well, you see, you guys are getting pretty close to being Jehovah's Witnesses without celebrating any holidays. Yeah, right? and we celebrate birthdays too. So. Uh, well, you know. Okay, so what was your favorite um, Halloween slash? I would have story? to say my favorite story was uh, at Saint Stephen's when at the Presbyterian Church, which we did celebrate Halloween, and righteously so. We actually got to dress up in costumes and got. Um, critiqued on our costumes. Oh. Well, my grandmother made me a unicorn costume. Oh. And which was very special. Uh, she sewed it, and my grandmother's in the process of passing away, so it's a very dear and fond memory. And I hated the costume to start with, but then I won the uh, prize Yay. as the drenched unicorn, because I went bobbing for apples the whole night. <laughs> well, the one thing that Adventists will do is they'll throw on a hell of a fall festival. Oh, wow. Instead, they'll have like a um, a carnival kind of a, uh, a a theme going on, and it's a fall festival. Nobody dresses up, but you know you have all sorts of games like bottle for apples and you know stuff like that. And they would also do a food drive. Oh, nice! Um, so, um, in lieu of candy, everyone had to bring like a couple of canned goods instead of candy canned goods no so and then we would um hand them out to um homeless shelters and stuff like that so that was the that was another good part about it it's just that the eating candy in the dark and avoiding the neighbor's kids is the funnier story well see <laughs> also <laughs> when we were in, in my high school years we play we got to dress up our old church for a mm -hmm. halloween drive we did a unicef carnival okay and um when you hit the High school years, you got to be part of the uh, the haunted house at an old church born, made in the 1800s. Shitting bricks already. Really, <laughs> we actually had a whole spiral thing that led up to a uh, like a tower. Yeah, shitting bricks. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we had like all of the rooms and done up really nice. And one of the funniest parts was uh, Christopher Settle. Because I would play this guy, a person who'd come up. We had this whole graveyard built as they we were coming, coming down, and all these kids are coming through. <laughs> and 
I ran up right in front of, right behind them, scared the shit out of these little kids, and turned. <laughs> and then my friend Christopher Zettel, who was dressed up as Darth Vader, so he'd have Darth Vader right behind it, so what would happen is he would do the death grip on me and I'd go flying down the other stairs. And so, I was very nimble back in my youth. <laughs> <laughs> Shitting a brand. It was great times. But we have House. We have three people who've participated in my question on and which was uh on the pagan what is your fondest solid me- memories? Any statement below with your own like may be used on the Bib show tonight. Okay. Uh C- Cindy Bourgeoisie uh said as a child our dad would take us trick or treating as an adult sitting outside by a fire and thinking of loved ones from the past. Very, very lo- wonderful story there. Mm. Monica Joyce Crocker Williams uh, said, "My my old my the year my nan died. She she died on November first. That's Samhain. She came to say goodbye to me, and she still always hangs around with me on Samhain and oh, gives me a hug on Samhain. So Aww. we have a. And then Wendy Paxton, the family gatherings without the Yuletide bun fights." So I really With the went what fight? without the Yuletide bun fights. Bun fights. So I'm thinking they might throw rolls at Yuletide. I want to go to the year. Oh. Wendy Paxton, if you're turning in, I want to go to Yule, your Yuletide festival. If you guys are throwing food at each other, I'm all up for that. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Yeah. So I guess for, first of all, thank you for the people who people who did participate in the question. We really appreciate that. Um. I guess um, now we come to the meat and potatoes of the bibs and tonight, and we're going to talk about um, Samhain, and we're going to talk about um, Halloween and um, the history um, surrounding it and stuff like that. And so um, we'll turn it over to Joe to do a little bit of candlelight reading while we eat our candy in the dark. But I can't read in the dark. Oh, I, I, oh, thank you for the candle. Many of the traditions we associate with Halloween, including dressing up in costumes, going out trick-or-treating, and even carving jack-o'-lanterns, are all modern interpretations of Samhain, pronounced Samhain, it's spelled Samhain, S-A-M-H-A-I-N, pronounced Samhain, or even Savin, if you're... Right. Uh, have Celtic? a lisp. <laughs> Actually, Celtic is Savin. Yes, I know. I you have a lisp. I have a lisp. <laughs> and Gaelic for summer, summers and Samhain is an ancient Celtic festival celebrated from on the sunset of October 31st to the sunset of November 1st. This falls about halfway between the autumn equinox and the summer winter solstice. Not the summer solstice. The winter solstice. But it'll probably be the summer solstice as well too, because you're going halfway between both of them. No, that would be that would be Lunasa. Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah, that's okay. During the Samhain, people bring their cattle down from grazing pastures and choose which animals to slaughter for winter. Households take We're having steak of steak again. <laughs> <laughs> that's for Katie. <laughs> Households take careful stock in their pantries and food supplies in order to prepare for the long and cold winter ahead. Unlike Gaelic, the Gaelic festival of Beltane, which is a celebration of life and growth, Samhain honors the darker side of things. Samhain is considered the liminal, liminal time as it straddles between the abundance of summer and the harsh realities of winter. Limitality associated with the evening of October 31st creates a window during which some believe the spirits can easily enter the world of the living. Believers think that during Samhain, the veil between the living and the dead is the thinnest, and the deceased appease the wandering spirits. The Celts would place a dinner plate at the, their table and bowls of food or treats by their front door. People took special care not to offend the wandering spirits, and if they left their if they left their homes, they would disguise themselves with masks and costumes to avoid recognition. Eventually, the tables were turned, and the masked citizens started imitating the spirits they once feared, going door to door and demanding treats and threatening to perform mischief of their own. Sounds a little trick bit or treat. like Loki. Or trick or treating. Trick or treating. Right. <clears throat> trick or treat. 
By the way, did anyone ever, when you walked up to someone's door and knocked and they said, and you said trick or treat, did they ever say trick? No. Uh. But I always do trick or treat, so my feet give me something good to eat. <laughs> right. Now the jack o' lanterns. Um, did you ever carve any of those? I did, and they were very, very sad jack o' lanterns. There is a way to to carve jack o' lanterns. Um, and make them last for like weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but put some hairspray on it. Oh uh, well, yeah, we never knew how to do that, and so. Kidding. Oh, oh okay. Um, and so we would carve jack o' lanterns. Well, we did it one year. I remember very distinctly. My mom um, and the kids did it one year, and we carved jack o' lanterns. And by the next day, they were drawing bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and looking very sad and wilted, and so we throw them away. Do you know there's actually a lore on this? A um, whole story on this. And this, by the way, this comes from Mother Earth News um, on uh, MotherEarthNews.com. Uh, this is from Nature and the Environment. Uh, this was actually written by Hannah Kincaid, from what I'm reading from here. But, okay. Um, and she's in Kansas. Uh, Jack Leonard's were large. Um, were large fires lit on the large fires were lit on the hilltops to protect the community from the wandering and unpredictable spirits. It was said that the fires mimicked the sun and also helped hold back the darkness of winter. And the bones rec of the recently slaughtered cattle were thrown on the fire to henceforth call henceforth call the term bone fire. Bone fire, you say? Bone fire, which was coined. To turn into the modern word bonfire. Bonfire, you say. Bonfire. <laughs> this protective fire was around the community members and mischief makers alike by placing a hot coal in the hollowed, hollowed out turnip, potato, or beet. Mm -hmm. I hate beets. I was going to say, isn't that your favorite thing in the world? No beets. Mm. These makeshift lanterns were carved out with creepy faces. That's one thing beets are good for. You can carve them out with creepy faces. And stab them. Stab. Die. Die. That's how you die. carve them. <laughs> to a myth about a man named Stingy Jack. Okay, they definitely stingy the taste when it came to beets. According to the lore, the drunkard Stingy Jack tricked the devil into never condemning him into hell. But when Jack died, however, God would not allow such an unsavory soul into heaven. Either so, Jack was either sensed to wander the eternal wander the earth with nothing but a cold nestled inside a hollow out turnip for the, for for light. The Irish refer to Stingy Jack's ghost as the Jack of the Lantern, which officially turned out to be the Jack o' Lantern as we know it today. Interesting. These vegetable lanterns took a modern twist when a large number of Irish immigrants settled in the United States. And during the potato famine, discovered our native pumpkin, a vessel too, which is much larger and easier to carve than the turnip. The pumpkin carving became so popular that the American farmers began to breed varieties for carving. Breeders paid special attention to pumpkin thick skins, shallow ribs, the thin flesh, and the large bodies. A few of the uh, pumpkin carving varieties have withstood the test of time including Howden, Casper, and Young's Beauty. For growing tips about the best carving are pie. 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 Decorative pumpkins. Uh, gardening. The Barbara Pleasant's article about grow all about growing pumpkins. Check that out, folks. Check it out. Um, did you know uh, my husband and I for our anniversary went to uh, the, not for the anniversary, for our wedding, for our honeymoon, went to the Harvest Festival at um, Branson, Missouri, their Silver Dollar City. There are eight country, eight, the pumpkins are, is it on eight continents the pumpkins are grown on? Yes. Eight continents in the world pumpkins are now grown. Interesting. And it's native to the United States. Wow. Our little pumpkins. Little pumpkins. They just become so fertile everywhere. <laughs> I just love them. We're so proud. 
Food is dark for and divination. Food is for thought and divination. Okay. What ritual is your favorite? What is one of your favorite rituals to do um, when you do uh, your solemn ritual? Which I know you guys are doing this week. Right. Um, and we'll get to that at the end of the show. Um, favorite ritual to do... Um, you know what? I have to say my all-time favorite ritual um, was the fairy ritual that we did for Nunasa. Um, you were so cute as a little fairy. I dressed up as Elliot. Oh, what was my last name? Elliot. El- Elliot Lotus Twist. Lotus Thank Twist. you. Elliot Lotus Twist. And Elliot. Yes. I dressed up as a fairy <laughs> named Elliot Lotus Twist. And... Um, we, we had a fairy ritual and it was the best, but that's not a solemn ritual. It's, no. It, it's not exactly a solemn ritual. Um, I would have to say, um, um, up there is probably the ritual that, uh, we did for Coretus, um, here a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago. Uh, yeah, last week. Yeah, last weekend. Um, and that was a sound ritual that had all men, no women, and it was pretty darn awesome. Um, but outside of those two rituals... They didn't uh, have bacon either. No. Um, outside of those two rituals, I really can't think of a favorite sound ritual. What about you? Well, I think this is probably going to be my official second one, but I do remember we did the cakewalks last year. Mm. And that was quite fun. Yes. And uh, me dressing up as the the uh, honey badger. Because honey badger don't give a shit! <laughs> and then me doing honey badger as uh, Captain Morgan. So Captain Honey Badger don't give a shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Give me some more rum! Damn it. <laughs> damn it, damn it! <laughs> well, um... The divination and ritual have been a part of Samhain since the ancient times. Samhain. Samhain. Thank you. <laughs> I was reading it like a reader. Right. Since the ancient times, because the veil between the worlds was thought to be the thinnest on, of course, as they said, thinnest on October 31st, the people would pay, play divination games, like what you're going to be doing. But you will talk about that later. Yes. And uh, attempt to predict a significantly... Future related to death and marriage. Death and marriage. Death, death and, marriage, and marriage. Goes together, together like, like a horse, horse and carriage. carriage. <laughs> 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 that was good. Oh, one particularly quirky divination was called the called puh. Pull. Puh. Uh, puh means to pull the stocks. To pull the stocks. And this elig- on this game, eligible young men and women were blindfolded and led into the garden. Uh, <laughs> is this an maze? Beltane ritual? Yes, this is a Beltane ritual. <laughs> was this a maze garden with high protein and rich vegetables? <laughs> and for those who are reading, listening, that is from the Bards. If you don't ever listen to the song, um, uh, your virgins taste better than those who are not. They are amazing. <sighs> But they were pulled into the led into the garden where they would uproot a kale stock. And the piece of kale was thought to thought to determine all the characteristics about the participant's future husband or wife. One would hope to pull for a tall, healthy piece of kale that tasted sweet. <laughs> they wouldn't want a sweet piece of kale. I know I wouldn't. The the amount of dirt that clinging to the, the, the kale stock was believed to represent the size of the dowry. A clean root represented positive positive poverty. The kale had been ridiculously trendy lately between kale chips, kale smoothies, and perhaps Mm. it was the true popularity during the was during the ancient Samhain divination games. Who knew? Okay. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. So let's Moving on. Well we're not gonna move on. I'm gonna um because there's a there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. Um, Do you like kale? I love me some motherfucking kale. I could eat kale chips, kale smoothies, kale in the morning, kale in the evening, kale for supper time. It's yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy, tummy, tummy. Mmm, mmm, good. Do you prefer it dirty kale? <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> the bitch did a kale. <laughs> okay, going back, sorry. Um, there's a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, <laughs> if, if, I, I would encourage you that if you don't, um, if you didn't catch all of what um, Joe just read, um, to definitely go to that website, which is... Mother Earth News, and the title is Nature and the Environment, but the actual title is The History of Samhain and Halloween. Right, and it's it's very informative. It's only about two pages long. It's very, very informative, but um, the one thing that jumps out at me... It's um, the marriage. The what when, if? No, 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 Sorry. no, 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 no. Um, actually, is there is no mention... No mention, ladies and gentlemen, of devil worship. No. No mention at all of devil worship. Why? Because we don't believe in worshiping the devil. It's so very important. Going back to my um, Adventist days as a kid and eating Halloween candy in the dark um, and avoiding the neighborhood kids on um, Halloween. Um, it was very, very big um, in the Adventist church um, to say that, you know, Halloween was all about, you know, devil worship and Halloween was all about, you know, evil and Halloween was all about this, that, and the other kind of nefarious and dark and um, horrible kinds of things, but there is nothing in that article, and it's actually a very, very well written article. Um, it's an amazing, it's, amazing, yeah, and it's very detailed. Um, it's a very good article. Nothing in there says anything about um, Sauron being evil. The uh, the problem is um, what we don't understand, we fear, and. That's across the board. That's just human nature. Mm -hmm. What we don't understand, we generally fear. And for people on the outside looking in, they didn't understand the concept of the veil being as thin as it is during this time of year and being able to communicate to those that have passed over um, and doing divination um, to um, talk to these people because the veil is so thin during this time of, of year. Um, also, um, another thing is that this was, Samhain was the last um, harvest. Um, Samhain, is a celebration of the very last harvest um, before you got prepared for uh, the winter, which was sort of alluded to um, mm -hmm. with the cattle um, being um, paraded by the fires, um, you know, so that you could take stock, quote unquote, of, you know, what your, um, what your bounty was going to be for the coming winter months, which were harsh and cruel. Um, so none of that has anything to do with Satanism or, you know, devil worship or evilness or, you know, it might be scary to reach out to a dead relative and that dead relative, it, you know. Well, you know, in some cases, it's how many people would give a chance to talk to someone that you love exactly. one more time? I mean, how many people actually pray? To that person, you know, exactly. you know, if you can hear me, even from a Christian, you know, non uh, Christian, non Christian. I'm not, not, I'm not Christian, but a Christian, a Christian perspective. perspective view, yeah. If Jesus died and was rose again, That's and you pray good. to him, right? And for those who pray to Mary, Mary, and for those who consider. Um, you know, praying to Peter, the saints, the uh, Absolutely. As aspect of that. But you have, I would, I would give my heart if I could talk to my grandfather one more time. I would, you know, if I could have just a few more words with Papa, not Papa, Baba, just to talk to him. And this is the perfect time of year the to do that. time of year to do it. Um, one thing that was not mentioned um, in the article, that we as witches um, are known for um, 
that wasn't mentioned in the article is flying on broomsticks. And the way that happened, it's actually not it did not happen during Samhain. It happened during either the spring equinox or Beltane. I don't remember which. Um, I'm thinking probably Beltane, where they would send the kids out into the fields on broomsticks and have them jump as... You were talking about the broomsticks. Yes, um, the broomsticks. Um I, I believe it was at Beltane. Um, if, if it wasn't at Beltane, it was definitely at the Spring Equinox Square. Um, the parents would send the children out into the fields, and they would have them jump up and down, up and down, up and down, as high as they possibly can. That was a ritual that had to do with um, growing of, of, of the crops. And so it probably, the reason why it wasn't mentioned in... Because you've harvested the crops. Right, because you've harvested a harvest of the crops um, by the time Samhain comes around. But um, for those of you that may not be witches and wondered how did witches ever get um, stuck with flying on broomsticks, well, um, that is one of the reasons why. Also, um, black cats. Black, <coughs> yes. Um, black cats... Um, by the way, at this time of year, are very endangered. It very endangered because people are so silly about cats, um, and people who don't know what they're doing will go out and sacrifice cats and stuff like that. And so, usually during this time of year, um, 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 shelters won't sell black cats or won't give away black cats. They won't place them in homes because they're so afraid of that happening. Um, and, but by the way, black cats and dogs and dogs um, are um, are the hardest to place in homes because of superstitions surrounding them. Um, Sounds like discrimination to me. Well, it is, but you know, whatever. Um, black cats are just. Earth. I don't have anything to disprove that right now because I have. I'm kidding. Well, I'm, no, no, no. What I mean, what, what I mean to say by that is, I don't have anything to say. Well, this is why you know witches had cats and whatever. I'm not too sure of the history behind that and how we got stuck with that particular kind of. Maybe because we knew what it was. Maybe because we knew what it felt like to be uh, beaten and torn. Because if you think about it. Um, during the Black Plague, the cats were just as exterminated right. as the witches were. Right. So maybe it's since then that we've become closer to our feline feline companions because of we knew what it was like just to be killed for being. Just being, when in fact it was actually the rats that Gravity caused, works. It was the rats that caused the plague and not the, and, and not the cats. But anyway... Um, there are many, many myths out there that I would encourage you to look up um, and study on your own. Um, regardless of your religious persuasion, it is my firm belief that your god or your goddess or your higher, higher power, power um, would not want you to follow him, her, it, whatever, blindly. Um, study. Um, make yourself aware. Um, of everything around you. Of everything around you. Learn as much as you possibly can, because when you learn, that just makes you a better spiritual person. Buddha so, said, when you're in doubt, pray. When you pray, doubt. Perfect. And that was the Buddha saying? That was Buddha. Nice. It was either Buddha or Gandhi, but I'm pretty sure Buddha said it first. Right. Why not? Why not? Buddha's got a lot of wise things. <laughs> so anyway, um, I would encourage you um, that if you're curious about um, myths and stereotypes surrounding um, Samhain, surrounding Halloween, um, we do not worship Satan. Satan. We do not worship evil. We are not evil people. I would encourage you to research and study on your own and not even take our word for it, you know? Do not even take my word for what I tell you. Buddha even said that. Right. Go out and study. 
just just study. Um, and Samhain is a great time of year. It is our new year. Um, we begin our New Year celebrations um, beginning on October 31st. Um, so this is a perfect time of year also to um, not necessarily make New Year's resolutions, but saying, okay, we're about to turn the wheel again. So um, this is a great time for you to, um, um, to, to, to study and take on new things. Um, so. That, that's my point. I, I agree firmly, and I don't know why, but that song brought the wheel in the sky keeps on turning. But, you know, hey. Uh, right. The wheel in the sky keeps on turning. turning. But they actually had a really cool poem here for one of their, the Pooh the Stucks. Okay. Uh, a lad and a lassie, hand in hand. Each stuck, each pull a stock, a male. And like the stock, his future wife. Or husband without fail. If stock is straight, then so is wife. If crooked, so is she. If earth is clinging to the stock, the puller, the puller rich will be. And in the taste, like the taste of each tenant's heart, the heart of the groom or bride. So shut your eyes and pull the stocks, and let the fates decide. decide. <laughs> may the fates be with you yes may the odds ever be in your favor okay so I guess we're nearing the end of the show so we probably should talk about what's coming up well, for each of us I also have something else to say there oh, sorry, has been a case in our Oklahoma City area locally where um, a local group of us and I don't know if I should be saying this um, there has been some plants stolen and we would like to see them back. And it was very, very childish whoever took them from the Bell's place. So if you are turning in, whoever took the, the plants, shame on you. For shame. And also, I don't get it. Um, there have been, there's been vandalism, not only at Bell's, but... But on different churches? But at different churches where people have just been stealing shrubbery. What, what, the fuck? You know? Uh, Hashtag I, the fuck. I really nowadays. I really have no idea, but I'm thinking for some one reason, you know, we have that guy get me a shrubbery. What? What are you talking about? Well from Knights of Knee. What? The Knights of Knee! They're wanting the shrubbery, so we're having people go around and steal your shrubberies. I don't know what you're talking about. But there is one small problem. What is that? We are now no longer the knights who say Nick. We are now the knights who say Therefore, we must give you a test. What is this test, O oh knights of knights who till recently said Nick? Firstly, you must find another shrubbery. <laughs> What you're saying is Monty Python enthusiasts are terrorizing Oklahoma City trying to find shrubbery. For the night tour so recently said me. <laughs> you know what? It is magical. I understand. I understand. I do not hold it against it anymore. If they are Monty Python enthusiasts and they <laughs> were recently the knights who said me. And they're going and it's around. a deadly statement, you know. It yes. can kill old ladies. Right. And they're going around and stealing shrubbery um, as a test. You know what? Hats off. But don't be stealing shrubberies from churches or stores. Go steal them from other places. Steal them from parks. <laughs> steal them from parks. <laughs> steal them from magnolias. <laughs> but do not steal them from people who already own them. They have a nice shrubbery. They do not need to be taken at all. Right. Um, okay, so let's talk about what's going on this week, and I'll begin. You uh, begin. Um, Labyrinth Temple. Um, is having our Samhain celebration. If you're here in Oklahoma City and um, you can either get rid of your kids or don't have kids um, or you um, or you fed them candy in the dark and you can sneak away. 
<laughs> while they're eating candy in the dark in their darkened home while you avoid your your ne'er-do-well um, neighbors. Um, by all means, stop by the Labyrinth Temple. Uh, we will be um, doing a ritual um, and a potluck beginning at 7 o'clock p.m. on Friday the 31st. Um, the ritual we have already written, we're writing the ritual right now, and part of the ritual that I can say right now is we will have various stations around the temple wherein people can um, do divination work, wherein they can go, you know, one by a one on one um, interaction. Um, with the people that are on the other side of the veil. Um, it, it's going to be really, really cool. It's going to be really, really awesome. We have like five different stations. We have um, we have a cave um, divination scene. Cave of wonders. Where you can actually go inside, quote unquote, the womb of, of, of Mother Gaia and, and do divination. Good night, Gaia. Um, we have uh, water divination, we have fire divination, we have a pendulum that we're going to create that's going to be a big-ass pendulum, uh, and we have mirror uh, divination, uh, which is going to be just awesome. So if you are available on Friday evening at 7 o'clock, we will be having dinner first. Uh, just bring anything that you'd like. Um, it's a potluck meal. Um, and then after the meal is over, we will have ritual and then we will leave the rest of the evening open up for divination purposes. Um, I will be over at, again, at bringing up Bells again, I will be over at Bells helping out with their uh, Salon party. Uh, those who do have kids and can't get away from them, bring them over there. We have lots more candy to give them. <laughs> Uh, um, and for those... And you won't make them to eat, you won't make them eat it in the dark. I will not make, we will not make them eat it in the dark unless <laughs> your parents make you and do not bring me a shrubbery. <laughs> With this being said, um, uh, there was something else. How's your reading stuff giving? Oh, um, by the way, um... As as a quick as as a quick side, I know we talked about this last week really quickly, but um, Skepticon happened this past weekend. And it was it was awesome. Um, you got lost. I didn't get lost. It's actually, I drove right to the place. I just I hate being a broke bitch that can only afford Wi-Fi on my phone, and so I didn't have Wi-Fi for most of the day, <laughs> um, which really really sucked. <laughs> Um, but Skepticon was really, really fun. Um, <coughs> I got to meet a lot of interesting people and I learned a lot. So that was cool. How did the debate go? The debate went really well. Um, it did not devolve into a Jerry Springer, Maury Povich, you are the father kind of a moment. You it, are the father! It did not turn into that. Um, so hats off to Caleb Black. Um, who is one of the professors at UCO. He, I guess he is the uh, faculty advisor to um, the skeptics group um, there um, at UCO. Uh, hats off to him um, and everybody else who put on a fantastic show um, on Saturday. Um, everyone said that I was brave to go into the lion's den. Uh, people who were who did not believe, you know, in perhaps some of the things that I believe. And they were all very nice. They were all very cordial. I went to the after party afterwards, and it was off the chain. And um, it was just really, really nice. So hats off to Kayla Black and everybody else um, at Skepticon this past weekend. Um, as far as our readings go, um, Again, and, and I think I can speak for both Joe and myself, um, we are available for um, private parties readings and, private um, parties. And, private, and, and private readings and parties. So um, I will be tied up on the 31st with everything mm -hmm. that's going on with the Labyrinth, and you'll be down at Bell's Mysticals. And I'll be tied up on the 1st and the 2nd. Um, but I'm I, preferably tied up. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's my birthday on the first, you know. That's right. Happy birthday to you. Stephen, put your clothes back on. <laughs> I'm kidding. You look like a monkey. 
And you smell, smell like, like one, one too. too. I was trying to harmonize. <laughs> anyway, um, so I, I, I'm available this weekend on Saturday. Um, I will not be available on Sunday because both Joe and I will be tied up on Sunday um, um, at Cups. Um, Cups is having their um, silent ritual, but it's not not a ritual. It is a remembrance ceremony led by a Christian, one of um, one of our allies, um, Dale Weaver, um, who is a wonderful, wonderful man. I can't wait to see but what he, he comes has in up store. With. Yeah. Um, that's Sunday night. That particular thing is open to the public. Um, that's Sunday night at 6 o'clock or 7. 6 o'clock. It is a potluck, so sh bring something to share. Uh, if you do not have enough money to bring something to share, there will be plenty of food. Um, it's at the Channing Unitarian Universalist Church up in Edmond. Um, if you don't know where that is, Google it. Um, but, um, it, 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 it's a wonderful time. We'll have a wonderful time there. It'll but, be great. Yeah. It'll be fun. Um, Saturday night, I'm available for parties, um, and also for private consultations. I think I speak for both Joe and I yes. when we say that we're both available for private consultations. Um, and at, we'll at any time, um, we require, of course, um, notice and going through the proper channels, but you can reach... <laughs> You can reach um, you can reach me at uh, travelingtoro.com um, and on at the bottom of every page is are links to my uh, social media sites. You can click on the buttons and it'll get you there. So uh, or you can email me at traveler. That's just one L. Traveler at travelingtoro.com and um, book me for private readings or for any of your spiritual advise advisement needs. And that's all for me, claw-writings.com. I've also started up, started up a business of photography for those out there who might be looking for, instead of doing the normal Christmas card, doing the Yuletide cards. I will be glad to take your family photos and uh, uh, for the low price of $25, I will come and do as many as you want for the hour, and for uh, $29, you can buy the USB that comes along with it. So, altogether, about $54 for a whole setting, which is not bad not for too any. Shabby. And I'm still an amateur, so there will be some, and that will be uh, editing included, but uh, I'm still an amateur. I'm not exactly the uh, professional, so you're going to get amateur rates. But don't always remember, you'll get a little bit probably what you pay for. I mean, I'm not exactly the greatest, but I'm not exactly the worst either. Yeah. Steven's actually had some of my pictures done, and he's got them posted. I do. Um, and she did a wonderful job with me, and so I I can certainly give her credit for that. So um, I guess, unless you have something else. I don't have anything else. Well, with that being said, we want to go ahead and say thank you for tuning in to Bitches, Bitches in, in the, the Buckle. buckle. And we'll see you again next week at the same bat time. Same bat channel. Have a great week.